So welcome to the second tutorial in the WordPress theme development series. In this video we're going to be adding our header, footer, importing bootstrap and a bunch of things into our site. So we're going to get quite a bulk of it done in this video so it might be a long video. I expect it to be at least 10 minutes. Um, so yeah. So what you're looking at right now is just the HTML code which is just plain HTML for our site. So this is just the design of it and the markup of it. We need to actually create this into a WordPress theme. So remember, on our serve, we created a bunch of files, footer.php, header.php, index.php, and style.css. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and opened all of these up here. All of them are empty except the style.css, which we did last time in the last video. Um, and we're not going to be touching that yet. Uh, and then we've got these header, footer, and index. So the first thing we want to do is import bootstrap. So what I've got here is the bootstrap3 files. You can just download on the site, getbootstrap.com. And what I'm going to do is open FileZilla here and just drag these into the root directory of our theme. So those are just uploading. This is just in the My Theme folder. Then we've got CSS, Fonts, and JS in there. And then in CSS, I'm going to go ahead and remove this one because it's not needed. We're going to be using the min.css one. Same with the JavaScript, we don't need this one. And we're going to go ahead in our style.css and use at import so that we can get this into our site. So we're going to import it into this style sheet. So at import URL brackets semicolon, then here CSS forward slash bootstrap dot min dot CSS. And that's just going to import the bootstrap file into our site. Okay, so now that we've got that done, what we can do now is start copying this code over into our header and footer files. So what we're going to do is go directly from the top and find the end of oh, too far, the end of the navbar, which is just this bit here. That's the navbar there, and then container. And then we're going to copy this. We're copying the container because we want that to be at the head of every single page, and then we'll close it off in the footer later. So I'm going to copy this into the header .php file, save it, and there it is. Okay, so now I'm just going to refresh on my server in FileZilla and then head over to the site, refresh, and nothing happens. Why? Let's have a look. The reason nothing happens is because we need to import this into our index file. This is the pretty much the home page theme. So what we can do is we can include the header and footer with two really simple tags. And these tags are built into Bootstrap. They're simply, it's not, sorry, not built into Bootstrap, into WordPress, get underscore header, brackets, and then semicolon, that's just a function. And then we can, close, we can do footer as well. And these are essentially just gonna import, uh, include those files. So yes, so it's gonna include header.php and footer.php. So now if I refresh, we've got something. Well, not quite what we want, but it's, it's getting there. So if I view this page source, the problem we have here is it's not linking to our CSS properly. And if we go to this directory that it's trying to find, it's saying not found. Why? It's looking in the wrong directory. It needs to look in the themes directory. Now, luckily, WordPress has come up with a function so that we can easily get the style sheet URL. So I'm going to hop back into the, in, uh, where is it? Header, yeah, header.php. I'm going to get rid of this bootstrap one. We don't need that anymore. And then the style.css one. We're going to replace this with a PHP tag. And this function is going to be blog info brackets semicolon. And inside here, we're going to put style sheet underscore URL. Again, built in function in WordPress. You don't need to worry about how it works. All you need to know is that gets you the CSS file name or the location of it. So just re-upload, and now if I refresh, wow, I've actually got something. We are now seeing Bootstrap running and everything, uh, and it looks pretty good. Now we're going to do the same for the footer. So in our index.htm, I'm actually going to delete everything that we've already copied over. So from container all the way up, I'm going to delete that just to make our lives easier. And now we want to look at everything that is going to be on every single footer page. So that starts here at this navbar. I'm just going to drag from here 
and copy everything going down. That includes the modal for the contact us form, uh, that includes the nav bar as well for the footer. So I'm going to control X that to cut it out. And then in our footer, it's going to paste that in there. So done. So now I'm going to re-upload it as before with FileZilla. And then refresh. There's our footer. Looks pretty good. Now, here's the problem. Our JavaScript stuff doesn't work. So this social media button doesn't work. If I drag it in, this button doesn't work. And this is for the same reason as this as the CSS file. It's not connected properly. Now WordPress has another solution to this. We can simply before this put PHP tags and add a forward slash here. And here we can just put get underscore template oh, all lowercase template underscore directory brackets because it's function. Save it. Don't forget the semicolon and re-uploading that and refresh and now it's all working these buttons now work so that's pretty cool just like that so now we're linked up to the JavaScript and we've also got jQuery on the CDN okay so I'm gonna hop back into the header here there's a couple of things we need to ha add the first one is just under the well just at the end of the header tags we're gonna put a PHP tag and this is gonna be WP underscore head and this is just so WordPress knows where it can put the uh, just some of its header stuff that it might need. Now it generally doesn't do anything, but sometimes it might. The next thing we want to do is make sure this, that this title can be dynamic, so that it will show whatever the page title is as well as the site title, so the name of the site. So this can be done with the PHP tags again. And what we're going to put is WP underscore title, again built-in function. And then inside these brackets, it takes some uh, parameters. The first one is how we're going to separate the page title from the site title. Inside here, we're going to put how we're going to separate the name of the site from the page name. So for this, I'm going to put two spaces, and in between, I'll put the line. That line thing is kind of at the bottom left of your keyboard. Uh, it's just like a line separator. You could put like a dash, or if you want to put a slash, or whatever you want. It could be anything, it can even be a word if you really wanted. But I'm going to put a, a line thing. If anyone knows what it's called, let me know down below. I've never quite worked it out. The second parameter is basically, it's a boolean. It's a true or a false. Now we're going to set this to true. You don't really need to worry about what it does that much. But it's basically, if you understand PHP, true will echo it out into here. And false will just return the value. So... If you know PHP, that's what it means. If you don't, don't worry about it. Just put true. And then we're going to put, this is a string, we're going to put right. And this is just basically about the ordering of the site name and the page name. So put right in there. You can experiment what right and left do. But yeah, I would, I'm just going to put right. So now I'm going to save all that. Press yes. And go into here and refresh. Now we won't see any immediate uh, changes because we've got nothing inside this index.php file. We've got no content inside it. And we'll be working on this uh, sort of in, a, in the next tutorial. Um, one last thing that we need to do is in the footer.php, right down here below our script, we're going to put PHP and then inside here WP underscore footer. It essentially does the same thing as WP underscore head, but anything that needs to go in the footer will go here. So that's it for this tutorial, don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe if you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.